So guys, for the next two weeks, we're gonna travel without our laptops. No internet, no social media, no blog, just filming, 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 and when we're back in Bishkek, then it's gonna be a whole lot of editing. Not just going to be filming, 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 and also going to be enjoying. <laughs> yes. There is a, a hidden, ugly truth about travel blogging. It's a lot of time in front of the laptop and we need to take a break from it. It became such a habit to work every day on the laptop that now it really is weird and part of me goes like, so what am I going to do in the evening? <laughs> really, but... We're going to play chess. There you go. <laughs> Read books, go for walks around the city. So this morning we're leaving part of our gear with a friend, so we're going to travel a lot lighter for the next two weeks and it feels like such a relief. We already have a lot less weight on our backs. We left Bishkek without any plans as to where we would go. All we wanted was to explore Kyrgyzstan and we were ready to go wherever our drivers would bring us. So we're in our second ride of the day and it's beautiful. There's a lot of mountains. There's even a lot of snow on the mountains at the moment. It's spectacular. This morning where we were in Bishkek, absolutely no snow whatsoever. But now we're so much higher. It's already a lot colder. We're probably gonna be pitching the tent in the snow tonight. So we came all the way from down there into that road now we're just surrounded by the snow when we left Bishkek we hoped that the winter wouldn't catch up with us but when we arrived in those mountains we realized that the winter was already here <laughs> So our driver invited us for a coffee, maybe a bit of a bit of a meal. I'm a bit hungry. Balshoy spasiba. There's some in your beard. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're right below the mountains, so there's like snow all around. <laughs> it's pretty cold, huh? But we're gonna try to keep each other warm in the tent tonight. Yeah. Alright. Good morning guys. Now that's a cold night. Is it cold or not? <laughs> Cynthia's like the mummy. When I was a kid I used to go winter camping with my brothers but we would build proper winter camping shelters. So they were much much warmer than just a tent. A tent is not the best. No? How does it feel to hitchhike in the snow, baby? I don't know. It's not as romantic as I thought. Not in this environment. True. 
<laughs> I can handle a lot, but not when I have cold feet. Hitchhiking in Kyrgyzstan is trickier than what we've been used to so far. The people here don't really understand the concept of giving a free ride and some of the drivers asked us for money to share the gas costs. However, every single person we met was super friendly. So we're moving farther south into Kyrgyzstan. Now we're in a town called Karakol. And it's a small town, it doesn't look too big. It's in a valley and it's surrounded by these red mountains. Modern day shepherds with their cars. <laughs> So we're on the side of the game, uh, right in front of the field. It was still early in the morning when we saw people arriving from the surrounding towns and villages to participate in the event. They were all bringing their best horses and the hopes of winning today's game. So I saw a few guys getting ready for the game. They're putting on their uniform and they're putting on, on like a lot of protective gear. So I assume that it's going to be quite a rough game. This game is played all over Central Asia and it's one of the most popular national sports in Kyrgyzstan. Kokburu looks a little bit like rugby, with them played on horses and with the headed body of a goat as their ball. The teams have to try to pick up the body from the ground, push and battle their way around the field until the goat gets tossed into one of the goals. As an animal lover and coming from a society where vegetarians and vegans loudly protest against animal abuse, this game can be very shocking to watch and definitely a bit of a controversy, but at the same time, it's also part of an ancient culture and we weren't there to judge, but to be open-minded and learn. One of the locals told us that the dead goat polo was invented after people saw a pack of wolves kill a goat and toss it around for fun. The sport was also used to get horses ready for war. After watching the game, it did indeed look like a real war, with all the players and horses smashing into each other. Those guys have to be really, really, really fit to lean down, grab that carcass, lift it up, and then ride the horse full speed, trying to go. Man, those guys have to be in such good shape. What we saw today is what we really like to see in a culture, you know, these things that your average tourist won't really see. Uh, today, people here were playing their national game, it was fabulous. Just see everybody together, cheering, it was quite a moment and um, I think that it's something precious to be able to enter the culture and see all these, these secret aspects of a culture sometimes. What we've learned from this little adventure is that it's sometimes good to not make any plans. Life often surprises you with the most unexpected situations and interesting meetings.